Hi everyone, this is Sharan. Welcome to Day 6 of Learn Data Science in 100 Days series. Today we are going to see about uh, if condition, how to implement them in Python, for loop as well as while loop. So before getting into the tutorial video, I just want to provide a brief uh, introduction about what we are going to see and uh, how like, a for loop is different from a while loop. So the first one is uh, if then else condition. So what happens is in an if else condition, so after the if statement, we generally have a condition. So if this condition is satisfied, then we usually have an expression or a statement that needs to be executed. So similarly, if this condition is failed, it would go on to the else if and then look for the second condition. If this condition is satisfied, then it executes this expression here or a series of statements. So this continues, if none of the conditions are met, so then what happens is then there will be a final else statement, which would, uh, where we would exactly tell what needs to be done. So this is how an uh, if else uh, statement would generally work. Now coming on to the uh, next one, which is the for loop. So in for loop, so usually what happens is we initialize the value of i and there is an range through which it iterates and the value of i, so which we use here, would be incremented automatically. So within the for loop, so there would be a uh, sequence of expressions or statements that needs to be done. So generally it involves something uh, 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 on the lines of processing the data. So uh, like uh, adding up the elements of an list uh, or concatenating the elements of an list if it is a string. So then, uh, so this is, this is the for loop. So the difference between the for loop and while loop here is, so while loop is again a loop, but the difference here is it, this loop will continue to go on until the condition that we we mentioned here fails. So as you see, we don't initialize an value, like we don't have an i value that is getting initialized to here, or that is not being incremented by default. So if we are going to use an uh, uh, as an value like i, which needs to be incremented, uh, so then we need to explicitly increment those values inside the while loop. So by default, what the while loop does is it executes or it will loop through until this particular condition is being satisfied. So when this condition fails, it uh, stops executing the while loop and gets out of the while loop and uh, executes the immediate next statement. So that's an, a brief introduction about uh, if then else condition, uh, for loop as well as while loop. Now let's get into the tutorial directly. Coming to the tutorial part of day six, so we are going to see how to implement an if then else statement, for loop as well as while loop in Python. So let's move on to the first one, implementing an if then else statement. So as you see on my screen, what I'm doing is I'm passing a value to two variables a and b. Uh, here in this case, I'm passing 70 to variable a and 100 to variable b. And I I'm printing with a is greater than, so I'm printing a is lesser than b. Let's say we want to check for this condition, like here what's happening is we are not checking for the condition, we are just directly printing it. But let's say if we want to check if a is really lesser than b, so then we need to use the if, el if then else condition. So what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to copy for us to save some time. So now you can see here, what I'm doing is I'm using if, and then I'm passing on the value. So here, what I'm doing is I'm passing, I'm checking whether A is greater than B. So all these statements, like whether it is an if or an uh, for loop or an while loop, it needs to end with an colon that needs to be remembered. And the, the, uh, the other one that needs to be remembered is, so as we press enter from here, so in case of uh, Jupyter Notebook, it takes care of the indentation. So it is, it is four spaces by default. If you see one, two, three, four. So, so these are all some of the things that needs to be taken care of. So these indentation, it needs to be followed. So if we are going to have multiple statements here, so everything should exactly start from here. Okay, so having said that, so now in, in here, what we are going to do is we are checking if A is greater than B and uh, the statement ends with an colon. 
and then here we pass the expression so here in this case uh, there is no expression we are not doing any checks or we are not doing any manipulation uh, it's just a print statement we are printing that a is greater than b else if what we are doing is we are checking if a is equal to b so if a is equal to b we are printing that a is equal to b and if none of these conditions are satisfied then the else so as you see here all these statements end with an uh, colon so if, and else what happens is uh, that the only possibility is a is lesser than b so let me execute this and then see what happens so as you see here so it goes through this condition this condition is failed uh, so it pass goes on to the next condition so again it is failed so then it prints up the final condition so let's say i am passing 100 for a as well so now when i execute it so it prints a is equal to b so if i have i'll let 101 so then it's a is greater than b so that's how uh, we implement the if then else statement so the syntax here in python is uh, uh, it should start always start with an if statement and uh, it needs to have a condition so that could be one condition or a series of conditions too so that's absolutely fine but the condition it needs to end with an colon so then we would have a series of expression again later we need to follow the indentation here it needs to be four spaces from the beginning and the else if statement should again start from this from the beginning and uh, we have a condition here or again it could also have a series of conditions and then the expression that needs to be executed and finally the else so that's how uh, we implement the if then else uh, uh, statement in python so now uh, moving on to the for loop so for loop is simply used to traverse through and list and maybe print so here in this case uh, i have defined and list uh, so a here is a list which holds uh, the name of these companies so what i'm going to do is in order to print the elements of this particular list what i can do is i can just repeat uh, the print statement and uh, print each one of them so now when i execute it what happens is it prints each and every element of it but what i'm doing is i'm i'm using the print statement multiple times and printing each and every single element if the size of this list is huge i can't have so many number of uh, print statements so that's the reason why we make use of the for loop so what we do is we just use one single uh, line for print whereas we are going to loop through this list and print each and every element of it so what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you how an for loop works so so as you see here what i'm doing is for i so here in the for loop we need not we need not initialize these values so it will be automatically initialized so here i is in range of length of a so in order to in order to understand what this looks like what what we can do is I, I will just print and show you what it would look like so here this is what the range of length a so length a would be the length of this list and then what happens when we use range let's see now so as you see here when we use range of list with the length of this particular list so this is what is being generated so when we use the range of length a what happens is uh, the i value will first be initialized to zero and as we progress through the loop it will move to the next element like it goes to from zero to one to two to three and then a uh, four and then it stops the loop stops printing stops going through the loop so that's what uh, would happen in an for loop so what what's going to do what i'm going to do is i'm going to iterate through this list so there are there are uh, five elements so the index would start with zero and end with four so since i use a range so what happens is it starts with zero and then it goes on until four so when i print a of i a is nothing but the list and i is the index position of the element that we are going to print so when i execute this as you see what happens is uh, at first the i value would be equal to zero so it prints a of zero which is nothing but uh, the first element apple and the second time as it goes 
the i value would have been incremented to 1 and it prints the second element and so on so that's how the for loop is so now so this for loop can be can be implemented in in few different ways so here in this case what we are doing is we are passing the range of values so we are saying so this is the range uh, that needs to go through whereas we we can implement the for loop even without specifying the range so what we can do is as you see here what we are saying is we are saying for i in a so where a is an list so then what happens is uh, uh, it will iterate through each and every element that is present in the list so when i try to when i print this one what would happen is uh, so i would be initialized to this particular list and it will go through each and each and every element in the list from the first element till the last element and it would print those elements so when i execute this as you see here so here i is nothing but the element of this particular list so as we loop through this list it prints from the first element till the last element and the other way is uh, uh, so here so far what we have seen is we have seen how to loop through and list one by one let's say we want to skip the elements like every alternate uh, alternate element so then what we do is we pass on an additional parameter where so here is the start element like it starts with zero and the range is uh, until the length of a so if you want to see what is the length of a so i can i, can, I will quickly show you like what it is uh, print length of a so so here you, you can see the length is 14 so there are 14 elements in this particular list so when we use when we use a range function here and then when we specify 0 so 0 is the start and when we say length of a which is nothing but 14 it will the range the actual range will be from 0 till the a, till one uh, element less than this one so uh, since the length of uh, a is 14 it would stop at 13 so the actual range will be 0 to 13 and what we are doing is we are passing an additional parameter and then by passing to what we are saying is we are saying to skip every alternate element so now let me execute this one so what happens is uh, at first the value is set to 0 so the 0 index 0 a of uh, i is a of 0 is 11 it prints 11 and since we pass on uh, 2 as then uh, optional parameter here uh, so it skips one element here moves on to the second element prints that 13 and then checks whether uh, we have reached the length of a like just before length of a which is 13 we haven't so it still goes on to the loop and it prints the value till 13th element 13th element is nothing but 23 uh, sorry 13th element would be 24 but uh, it prints till 23 because there we are skipping uh, the value 24 and there is no element after that so that's how an uh, for loop can be implemented so these are all the different ways so now uh, what can be done like so far what we have seen is we have, we have seen just uh, implementing the print statements like uh, so what else can be done so we can do various operations generally within the for loop we kind of try to do some kind of an operation so the next one is uh, what we are doing is we are trying to make use of the for loop to add uh, to uh, to add uh, to to get the value of uh, of those elements and we are adding an value to it and then we are going to print it so when I execute this one, so as you see, what happens is it takes up the value, the first element, elements value, which is 11, adds 10 to it. So here, what we are doing is we are using uh, we are we are using the assignment operator, uh, which we learned maybe in uh, day two or day three, and uh, uh, just trying to recall whatever whatever we are learning, whatever we are learning. So and then we are printing it. Uh, so these are all the different ways of uh, implementing implementing the for loop so now coming moving on to the while loop so for loop and while loop can be mostly used in uh, many of the scenarios but the key difference is the in in case of while loop it will be it will be iterating until this condition fails and, and one other difference between and for loop and here in while loop is we have to initialize the value of i here as well as we have to increment it 
inside the while loop to make sure that it's getting incremented and uh, if we don't uh, if we don't uh, uh, increment the value of phi so this will be an indefinite while loop and uh, it wouldn't stop uh, so which which we shouldn't be which we never should be doing it so now let's see uh, i'm going to create an list pass on passing on the list to the variable a and i'm initializing i as well as total to zero so what we are going to do is we are going to check if i is less than length of a so length of a in this case would be length would be 14 it's the same list that we are going to use so when i is equal to 14 reaches i is equal to 14 so then it would exit this war uh, this while loop so the first statement is what we are doing is we are saying total is equal to total plus a of i so initially the value of total will be zero and first time when it is going into the while loop i is also zero we have initialized it as zero so a of zero would be 11 so 11 plus zero would be still 11 and then it would be assigned to the value total here we are incrementing i by one so second time when it comes the i value is incremented so it moves here so now we already have 11 here in total so we are going to add 12 to it and so continues and this continues until we reach the last element after that the for the while loop would be exited and then we are printing whatever values that is present in the variable total so if i execute this one so we see that the value is 245 so this is nothing but the sum of each and every element that is present in this list so that's it about uh, the while loop. So I guess you would have uh, understood uh, like uh, the difference between for loop and while loop and uh, in which cases uh, we use for loop as well as in which cases we use while loop. So if you are going to use while loop, the key things that needs to be remembered is uh, the values of i or whatever uh, variable that we are going to use here should be initialized and, those, and then the value of i should be incremented. Otherwise, this will go on as an indefinite loop. So maybe to show you what happens, I'm just going to comment this out and if I are going to run this one so as you see here this wouldn't stop this will continue to loop loop through and then it will try to continue add each and every element and uh, and that doesn't it doesn't exit the while loop I have to I have to manually intervene and stop the execution so that shouldn't be happening uh, so don't forget to include uh, these conditions if you're going to use the while loop so that's it about it so I have a couple of uh, uh, examples for you to try it out so maybe try out all these examples so that you become more uh, comfortable with all these loops uh, so for loop is definitely something that will be used later similarly if uh, then else condition two so whatever the project is uh, there would be definitely some use cases where we have to check for some conditions or we need to make use of for loop uh, to iterate through and list or an array or or a set or a, or a dictionary or simply to iterate through uh, rows of a uh, data frame so so these concepts are really important which will definitely be used so maybe try out all these examples so that you become more comfortable with it uh, so that's it for uh, day six i hope uh, you have learned something uh, new today so if you have learned something new please do a thumbs up and uh, subscribe to my channel so you get a notification uh, every time i upload a new video uh, if you think uh, this would help someone who is uh, trying to learn data science or struggling with uh, learning data science, uh, please pass on this to them uh, so it uh, helps them. Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, uh, bye until we see you on day 7. Bye.